you, Mr. Uh, hi, everybody. And on behalf of Governor Deval Patrick and all of us at the administration, uh, welcome and congratulations and thanks to Learn Launch for holding this wonderful event, and particularly those who, of you who are visiting uh, Massachusetts from out of state, particularly welcome you, and we are glad that you are here. Uh, this is a very exciting opportunity, what you're all here talking about in education, uh, technology, and we see it. Uh, as being an enormous opportunity for the United States, both you're creating a new uh, and, and uh, exciting industry sector here, and there's an economic opportunity, but obviously also it has tremendous uh, consequences for uh, progress forward as a society in the United States, uh, and you're accomplishing both things at once. So uh, as uh, Jeremy mentioned, I am certainly am no technology expert, but I'll just tell you what uh, Governor Patrick and I see uh, just as observers of what's happening uh, here in the state and our state's uh, economy and where we think uh, this uh, uh, sector of ed tech is and, and where it's going. Uh, and in my uh, simple version of things, what I s have seen and, and what we've all seen is this really tidal wave of disruptive change uh, that's caused by internet technologies just really uh, ripping through various industries across the United States and across the world. Uh, and we've seen that most profoundly uh, say in uh, media and uh, communications and uh, entertainment and retail. And where that tidal wave has hit with full force, uh, it has really turned everything upside down, both in, uh, from the perspective of the user and the consumer uh, of how you uh, shop, how you talk, how you listen to music, how you communicate, um, but also from the perspective of the participants in the industry. Uh, so you've had some uh, very big players who have not caught the wave and have been left behind. You've got some other big players who have managed to catch the wave. And then you've got some folks, uh, some companies that uh, you and I had never heard of 20 years ago that now are some of the big players. So all that stuff is happening. So we've seen that wave sort of rip through these various industries. That's on the one hand. On the other hand, uh, when I walk into my daughter's third grade classroom in Mason Rice Elementary School in Newton, Massachusetts, uh, which is a good school system, by the way, but when I walk in there, uh, it is jaw-droppingly similar uh, to the third grade classroom that I went into 45 years ago in Ridge Road Elementary School in North Haven, Connecticut. Um, and I don't mean it's kind of similar. I mean it's stunningly similar. I mean if you called someone in Hollywood to do set design and said, hey, we've got this picture of Greg Bialecki's third grade classroom from 45 years ago. Can you build a classroom that looks just like that so his daughter can go to school there? That's what it would look like. So um, that tells us one of two things is going to happen. Okay? Either this tidal wave of change somehow isn't going to hit education, and education's up on a hill somewhere, and this wave's going to just go by, uh, and it's not going to change anything. Um, which everybody in this room knows maybe is a theoretical possibility, but is in fact has zero probability of happening. Uh, and the thing that's going to happen is this tidal wave is going to get to education, and it's going to move through. And it's not just the kind of changes that we've seen so far, but it's going to be these incredibly revolutionary changes uh, so that the way uh, we teach and the way we learn uh, is as different from the way we communicate and shop and listen to music as we've seen over the last 20 years. That's what's coming in the next five or, or 10 or 20 years, um, which is uh, enormously exciting. And it's enormously exciting for you especially uh, because you're in the middle of that and you're right at the founding stages. And that is uh, an important economic opportunity. It's going to create the same, in my mind, our mind, Governor Patrick's mind, no question, the same scale of economic opportunity as the disruptive change in all those other sectors has changed. Uh, but also, it's just incredibly important for our state and for our country uh, and for our society. And I uh, believe, I think the governor and I share the view that uh, this change that we're going to see in education, this massive wave of disruptive change, in education over the next 20 years, and what we believe is a similar situation, almost identical situation, in healthcare and the life sciences. We've also seen some uh, in, uh, encroachment, if you will, or some waves lapping at the shore of, uh, of healthcare and of life sciences. But again, if you compare that to what's happened to those other industries, you've got to say we've seen nothing yet uh, compared to what we'll see over the next 10 or 20 years in the way that healthcare is delivered and the way that our uh, diseases are, 
are treated and cured. And so not only is economic opportunity, but I think that over the next 50 years, the way we change, uh, the, way, the way you change, the way we're all able to learn to bring uh, the power of education to people, uh, whether they live in a big city or a small town or 100 miles from anyone around them, uh, and, with, and from, to bring that educate, the power of education to everybody, whatever their disabilities or limitations can be, that we can uh, unleash through the work that you do, uh, really bringing the power of education to everybody in the country and the world. That and the fact that there's going to be this profound change uh, in the way, uh, what we see in healthcare and the life sciences, I think are the two most important things that you and I are going to see in our lifetimes over the next 50 years, and not just for this country, but for human society. So it's very exciting, and you're right in the middle of it, so congratulations to you about that. Um, we're very excited that you're here in Massachusetts, because we're uh, proud to say that we are in the middle of it uh, as well, uh, which is an exciting opportunity for us. It's also a bit of a, a challenge in a way, as I'll talk about in a minute. Certainly an opportunity. There's lots of exciting things happening here today, as I hope you've uh, heard already uh, today. Uh, it's also, uh, it feels good about the progress we're going to make here in Massachusetts because it's sort of a natural fit for us. What you, one of the great things about the Massachusetts economy uh, is we really have a, what I refer to as a diversity of excellence here. There's a lot of other places that may have a world-class cluster of companies and of industry in an area, uh, but we really have a remarkable uh, diversity of those, whether it's higher education or health care or precision manufacturing uh, or life sciences or clean energy or digital technologies. Uh, we really do have some of the best uh, research institutions uh, and businesses, world-class research institutions uh, and businesses in all of those areas right here in Massachusetts. And so what happens is when two or more of those different groups meet and rub against each other, that's where the most exciting things happen. So here we can combine the excellence, our reputation for excellence in education uh, with our reputation for excellence in digital technology. Uh, and what you're, the work you're doing is where those two meet. So that's exciting for us. We're also excited because we're seeing something that Massachusetts maybe hasn't been that great in in the past, uh, is that we're all working together. So we've got two great universities uh, get from one to another in about five minutes. They don't work, historically, over the course of their hundreds of year history, they don't work together a lot. They don't even talk together a lot. Uh, and we've tried very hard to change that. So, for example, when the, our five largest research universities in Massachusetts came together and said, uh, we have great people here, but we don't have the hard infrastructure. We don't have the high-performance computing power that some of our uh, colleagues out in the western part of the country have at some of the national labs and so forth. We got to build that here. Washington's broke. They're not interested in building a national lab here. We need to build a high performance computing center here. Will you, state, help pay for that? We said we will if it's a shared facility for all five of you. And that opened uh, just a couple months ago. So that collaboration is, is terribly important. We're seeing that now, uh, not just between Harvard and MIT, which are both participants in that high performance computing center, but we're seeing it um, in the Broad Institute for Life Sciences. We're excited to see it. Uh, as MITx became edX and now is continuing to add uh, to the universities and other uh, educational institutions that are going to become a part of that. So uh, the governor and I really feel very strongly that uh, basic formula for success is if you can get people working together, you're pretty likely to have good things happening. And we're seeing that here within the private sector. And we're interested in being a partner as well. I mentioned that uh, high performance computing center example. Our approach in general across the innovation economy uh, has been to reach out uh, to the academic sector and to the business sector and say, where are the places that we can partner with you uh, and to make our innovation technology clusters uh, more successful here? We've done that uh, in the life sciences, uh, in clean energy. We're starting to do it in robotics, in healthcare IT. And as you hear more in a little bit, we're starting to build those connections uh, in ed tech. Uh, as well. So we feel all of those pieces are coming together. As I mentioned, um, it is both an opportunity and a challenge for us. We pride ourselves uh, that we have been the home here in Massachusetts of excellence in education for a long, long time. Uh, we, the first uh, public school opened everybody was here in Massachusetts. The first public library 
open everybody was here in Massachusetts. Uh, Harvard University is approaching its 400th anniversary uh, in just a few years. MIT is now more than 150 years old. So we've been doing this for a long time, and to be honest you, we've been really good at it for quite a long time, and continues that day, our K through 12, not only our colleges and university, uh, but our K through 12 uh, public school system in Massachusetts uh, regularly ranks number one in the country. So that's great, but on the other hand, we're mindful of that tidal wave of disruptive change that's coming through, uh, and as they say in the mutual fund ads on TV, uh, you know, past results are not a predictor of future performance. <laughs> uh, so there's a tremendous opportunity uh, for us to ride the wave and be successful in the coming decades, um, but we gotta make sure that we're paddling very hard and we catch the wave and we don't let it overtake us. So for that reason, thank you to Learn Launch. Uh, we're delighted for you all to be here uh, and to see what's going on in Massachusetts, uh, and we look forward to working with you on this incredibly exciting opportunity, uh, both for our innovation economy, but also for American society. So thanks very much. Hi, good afternoon. It's actually Digital Learning Month. I know the previous slide had day, so I'm gonna throw that up here. Um, this may be the first time in history someone from the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education has their, their speech notes on a, a tablet. So I wanted you guys to, to note that, <laughs> put that. Um. So I'm very excited to, to be here and, and be part of today. Um, I've definitely enjoyed the learning opportunities uh, throughout the day. Um, you know, I, I consider myself a learner. Um, I can feel the, the buzz amongst the crowd and I, and I like that feeling. Um, as earlier mentioned, my name is Luis Rodriguez. I'm the Director of the Office of Digital Learning at the Massachusetts Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. Always takes me a bit to get that out. <laughs> um, the, the Office of Digital Learning is actually newer uh, at the department. Um, we've seen over the, the last couple years a big shift in the ed tech industry. And at the State Education Agency, we took a step back and said, well, what's our role? And we had some discussions around what our role is. And we decided to create a department to help us focus on figuring out what our role is. So we don't necessarily have that figured out yet, but at least we're investing some time to figure out what is a state education's agency role in this ed tech boom. Um, I want to thank Learn Launch and the secretary for giving me an opportunity to, to spend some time here today and share this with you. Um, I also wanted to, um, this is the official kickoff of Digital Learning Month uh, in the Commonwealth. So uh, the, the governor did proclaim it Digital Learning Month today, so we're very excited about that. And I threw uh, um, the office, uh, the website up there from the office. You can learn a little bit more about Digital Learning Month, but we're very excited about that to continue the buzz throughout the month. There are other activities going on throughout the state, so definitely check it out. Um, so we have a handful of activities occurring statewide around digital learning, but um, I don't want to get into them in a lot of detail. You can go into our website and check that out. But uh, I do want you to know that we're really thinking about this space from a, a where do we belong and how do we participate. And you know, I think if you reflect on Massachusetts, we're, we're very fortunate that our leadership continues to focus on education, right? Um, even the most recent proposed budget by our government has some incremental spend in education. Um, you know, we have a very strong tradition, as mentioned earlier, about education in the Commonwealth. Our fourth and eighth graders scored first or tied for first in reading and math in NAEP. It's pretty impressive, right? Since 1998, 10th grade MCAS proficiency has risen by 50 percentage points. That's a lot. Our statewide dropout rate is as low as it's been in the last half century. So we're definitely making progress. And while we have many achievements, we also still have some challenges. As Seth from Parthenon pointed out this morning, our proficiency gaps in student performance are still large and persistent. And while graduation rates are up, 37% of our public high school graduates take at least one remedial course in college, and that almost doubles to 65% for students that go to community college. So reflecting on these challenges and some of the other challenges that were brought uh, forward today, um, I think it's very exciting to talk about the transformative possibilities technology can bring to education. As elementary and secondary education commissioner Mitchell Chester says, technology is playing an ever-increasing role in our students' lives. When done right, the use of technology in schools will improve teaching and learning, 
make content more accessible, and ensure that all students are prepared for success beyond high school. I'm very excited to see so much interest in the EdTech industry. I'm, I'm kind of coined the term, you know, like social entrepreneurs, right? You're in this industry that gives back a lot to, to society. Um, I think U.S. Secretary of Education said it well when he said, um, to summarize the path forward is, we're going to need the collective effort of everyone, parents, teachers, business leaders, et cetera, to create the digital learning experiences that will prepare our children for success in the knowledge-based economy. As technology enters the education market at the policy level, we have a lot of questions. For example, building off of Anant's presentation this morning, how do MOOCs play a role in K-12? How do we personalize learning experiences for all students? How do we better use big data? And of course, we can go on and on and on, but I know I'm in between you and refreshments, so I'll, I'll stop that rant there. Um, but I think you're here today to help us address some of those questions. And in closing, um, I want to thank you for helping Massachusetts kick off Digi Digital Learning Month. And while I could close on how many billions of dollars the international education market currently is, instead, I'll leave you with a, a challenge that I face on a daily basis, and that is, what are you doing to improve the K-12 experience to help all students be prepared for success beyond high school? Thank you.